Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon. Uh, it is good afternoon. Oh, is. <laughs> My apologies how the time flies when you're having fun. I'm wondering whether you have an opening statement for uh, us. No, Chair, I don't, um, so I'm ready to take questions. Well, thank you very much for that. I'm, we're going to start the questions with Senator Carr. We're going to take 10 minutes from Senator Carr and then uh, we'll move on because we are going to have a hard break at 12.30 for lunch. I'd love that because I've got an appointment at 12.30. Don't worry, I'm, I've got your, your best colleagues. interest in mind, Minister. Thank you. Uh, as, uh, Chief Sinus, I wonder if you could uh, give us some advice on the electricity sector review. What progress is being made? Uh, Senator, uh, substantial progress is being made. As you would be aware, uh, I was invited to chair the panel that is conducting the review by COAG, and we presented our preliminary report to COAG on December the 9th of last year. Since then, we've been very busy, uh, actively consulting internationally and domestically, extensively consulting internationally and domestically. So uh, panel members and myself traveled to European countries, jurisdictions in America to see how they are operating their systems. Uh, we had a, s a series of public consultations in Australia during February and early March uh, in Melbourne, Hobart, Adelaide, Sydney and Brisbane. And then we invited submissions and received a large number of submissions, about 390 submissions, some of which were so thorough and long that they were like mini reviews in their own right. We've taken that on board. We've been working hard modelling various scenarios for the operation of the electricity system after the next three decades. And we're hoping to report to COAG um, in next month. COAG. Yeah. COAG. It's a report to COAG, it's not a report to just the <coughs> federal government. I see. It's actually to COAG, not the COAG Energy Council. I see. The submissions, um, they'll all be published, will they? They have been published. Yes, uh, but all, there's no, none with, of them. With, with minor exceptions, the, uh, people making submissions were entitled to say that they did not want. Yes, yes. And I think about 10, perhaps out of yeah. 390, okay. said no, but the vast majority are on the website. Uh, at the Department of uh, Environment uh, and Can I Energy. turn to the question of electricity first? <clears throat> Throughout your consultations, there's been a, a view expressed, or certainly as I read the public comment around these matters, uh, groups, um, and I'd say both from whether it be uh, trade union groups or industry uh, employer groups, uh, AIG, Energy Council, BCA, um, the ACTU have all expressed the view that there was a lack of clear policy which has led to disincentives uh, which have led to stifling of investment. Uh, would you agree with that proposition? I would, Senator. It's um, clear through... Well, I'm certainly agreeing with the statement that the submissions are indicating that, and there's a lot of reason um, to agree with the sentiment there. What we are hearing loud and clear is that the lack of clarity in the future policies around the electricity sector is giving great concern to investors and that uh, discourages them from making the necessary investment that will bring on the new generation for low emissions and reliability that we require. And so that is a key consideration in our minds as we're formulating our recommendations. And there's been widespread concern expressed, especially amongst manufacturers, but it's not confined to manufacturers, uh, about the steep rise in prices and the availability of reliable supplies of energy, in, whether it be electricity or gas. Um, do you share that concern? With, without doubt, I mean, prices have already gone up and the forward contracts for electricity prices are quite a bit higher than they have historically been. As part of our consultations, we have met with many, many different individual companies and representative groups. And certainly when we have met with the large industrial users of energy and the medium-sized industrial users of energy, uh, some of them have historically had energy costs that could be 10 to 15% of their expenditures. And 
if that doubles, it's a very significant impact. But 100 per cent plus is a common number that I'm being told. Would you agree with that assessment? How much? 100 per cent increases? Many of them are facing 100 per cent increases. Mm. That is correct. And many of them are finding that crippling in terms of their business operations. Would well, that is consistent with, with what I just said. Yeah. If you've already got a large percentage of your expenditure, you know, five, ten, even more, are being spent on energy, and that um, is going to double either, either you have to find efficiency measures to reduce just the energy in your system uh, or you're going to wear that extra cost and that will come off the bottom line. It's, it's mm. a concern. Well, and I don't expect you to go to specifics given that the report um, is, is due, so it's next Friday, isn't it? It's, uh, we, I will be uh, presenting to COAG on Friday week. Yeah, yeah Friday, ninth, tomorrow week. 9th of June. 9th of June. So, sorry, yes, not, it, so not tomorrow, 9th of June. And now, without going to the specifics of the approach, do you believe your report will canvas policy options that are available to fill that policy vacuum? That is absolutely our intention. We, are, we have been asked to produce what is likely to be the first whole system review of the national electricity market uh, since it was formed and that is often referred to by myself and others as a once in a generation opportunity. So we are looking at all aspects of a future market that addresses security, reliability, costs and emissions reduction. And so the issue of an effective national energy policy is one of the key considerations that you'll have to canvas? Well our review is for the national electricity market um, so I'm not sure exactly, Senator, what you have in mind when you say energy policy. So will it go just to electricity? Yes. So we are certainly going to recommend a blueprint, which is a framework for securely, reliably, affordably mm -hmm. uh, running a low emissions electricity system into the future. However, gas is used for the generation of electricity. So will it deal with gas in so far as it deals with electricity generation? We absolutely cannot avoid commenting on availability and cost of gas, but since it's not our primary terms of reference to deal with the gas system, uh, we will be treading a fine part between commenting on um, gas policy and confining ourselves to the electricity system. And as you say, uh, gas is very, very significant and you could argue that a lot of the price rise that we've seen in electricity in the last year is caused because of the increased price in gas. Gas is effectively the price setter in the wholesale market. So in terms of that policy um, approach, as your report has to, uh, does it consider the questions in terms of our national responsibilities under the Paris uh, Accords? We, we do, Senator. You're you think we're obliged, you're in fact, you are obliged to consider that? Adam? Well, I think the nation is obliged to consider that, and so, of course, we consider that in our report. Mm -hmm. Well, you need to also give uh, some consideration to questions of carbon intensity of generators? Not necessarily, Senator. Senator, we will be making recommendations um, around policies that all of the states and territories and the government would ideally agree to, around changes to the operation of the system that will increase security and reliability, take some of the surprises out of the system, and mechanisms to encourage new low emissions reliable energy into the market. And that includes baseload power? I, I prefer to use the word reliable not because there's something intrinsically wrong with the word baseload, but the challenge isn't what kind of power it is, but can it be delivered when it's needed? That's right. And securely. That's right. And so the combination of reliable and secure means that you can operate the system for large industrial consumers, That's right. as well for as the aluminium consumers, industry, for instance. Everybody. Can the aluminium industry look to your report with confidence in terms of security of supply? Yes. And your policy approach, will it 
deal with the question of price impacts for consumers? We will be looking within the remit on aspects of the electricity system that impact price for all consumers, residential, small, you know, vulnerable, yes. SMEs, yes. commercial, industrial. Yes. Uh, we don't have the powers of an ACCC, no, for example, to well, go... The ACCC are doing an inquiry. And the ACCC yeah. is running a review the at the moment prices. into the retail yeah. side of things. So I think the combination of a predictable, well well designed electricity system for the future um, the will intrinsically mm. lead to price impacts that are lower than they would otherwise be. Mm. It's very hard to say exactly what prices will be. And and you'll deal with the question of in long term investment signals. That'll be another aspect of the report? Correct. It is and the, one of the strongest messages coming to us, Senator, from all of the submissions is that investors don't have any sense of predictability in the market. You can't ever give an investor certainty, but you can give them some sense of them being able to use their expertise to come out with a predictable uh, investment decision. Mm. And will you deal with the question of the so-called externalities of carbon pollution, and particularly around the issue of the price on carbon? Going back to your earlier question, we will be very cognizant of the commitment that the nation has made through the Paris Accords. So I'm coming, and quite explicitly, given that commitment, does your report, will you, do you feel you, your report to COAG must also deal with the issue about a price on carbon? We absolutely need to deal with the issue of ensuring that the electricity sector can do its fair share in helping the nation to meet its obligations under the uh, Paris Accord, the COP21 Accord. That necessarily means that average emissions intensities have to come down. But emissions intensities are not the end game. They are not the outcome that has to be pursued. What has to be pursued is emissions in mm. total. Mm. The commitment that we've made is for a 26 to 28% reduction by 2030 of emissions on a 2005 baseline. Now, you can get to that by having yeah, a system works. that controls a certain uh, level of renewable generation. You can get to that by having a system that controls the emissions intensity if you know what the demand will be. Mm -hmm. And we will be addressing means by which that outcome yeah. can be achieved. So I could, can I just finish my question? Yeah, here? So just, look, the, the other issue that I concerns me goes to the issue of plant closures. Plant and does your report plant closures? Mm. Uh, the uh, ageing plants is mm. sometimes people describe yeah. it, but um, uh, I'm, you know, I, I specifically refer to what happened at Hazelwood, mm. uh, which I frankly think was a disgrace. You know, three months notice to close the plant, which was uh, producing, what, 25% of the state's electricity system. Three months notice. Um, clearly a device by which the owners could secure uh, a better price, control of the supply and jack the prices up, gouge the pricing up. Does your report come to deal with the question of why large generators are able to manipulate price by controlling supply? through plant closures? So, Senator, I, I, I obviously cannot directly answer the question because my report is to COAG and it's not a public document yet and I have to respect that process. But I can say that a number of the submissions to us have recommended that there should be some restrictions on rapid closures. I mean, if you look at the last 10 closures of coal plants, They've all been less than a year. The vast majority of them have been three, two, one or zero months notice. Mm. And that is devastating for communities because these are large installations and has high impact on the operation of the system. Uh, other submissions have recommended that there should be effectively information available to the investor community um, going out for a couple of decades 
about when closures mm. might occur, but not an, uh, an obligation, just information about the intentions. Um, so these are considerations that we are taking into account mm. as we're formulating our recommendations. And it goes further than that, because in the case of Hazelwood, where they rip up the boilers to destroy the capacity of anyone else to rejuvenate those facilities and put those plants, or even partially put those plants back into commission. Is that the type of issue that you're concerned I mean, I, about in terms of control of supply to actually extract maximum price? So given that I can't tell you what we're recommending, I can say that um, we would not be wanting to encourage that kind of behaviour, Senator. Mm. Thank you very much, Thank Madam you very Chair. Much, Senator Carr. Uh,